It doesn't matter how much you know about Super Mario Brothers, because in case you haven't noticed, Nintendo doesn't give a shit about the lore of its video games. Let's compile the 15 most significant mistakes the Super Mario Brothers movie makes compared to its video games. While Mario and Luigi are in a Brooklyn pizzeria, a man in the background is playing an arcade game. The game he is playing is Donkey Kong, which reached arcades in the Nintendo Entertainment System in the 80s. Although there has been an important change, the game's enemy here is not a monkey, but a Yeti. In the original game, Cranky Kong was the enemy, and Mario, as Jumpman, had to rescue Pauline from atop some scaffolding. All of this happened in the real world, but in the Super Mario movie, monkeys have always seemed to belong to the mushroom kingdom. Additionally, there's a huge mistake in the movie regarding Mario games. Donkey Kong was not supposed to be Cranky's son, but his grandson. The real father of Donkey Kong starred in Donkey Kong Jr., but this character completely disappears in the universe created by the Super Mario movie. Using a blue mushroom usually gives Mario quite a few advantages, such as faster speed, longer jumps, or possibly to run over water. The problem comes, however, when he has to face enemies. If Mario takes a single hit, he dies instantly. In the movie, however, this power-up works incorrectly, as we can see it in Mario's battle against Donkey Kong, where the monkey violently hits Mario in his mini-state, and when he crashes into the wall, instead of losing a life, he returns to his original state. We understand that Mario could and die, but that's what one-up mushrooms are for, in case things get really bad. The Super Mario movie had a little bit of Luigi's Mansion. In addition to the soundtrack of Luigi's horror games playing when he arrives at the Shadow Kingdom, at the end of the movie, one of the guests at Peach and Bowser's wedding is King Boo, the main enemy in the Luigi's Mansion game series. But there's a problem with his character being in this place. King Boo can't be directly exposed to sunlight. This enemy hides in haunted mansions and only appears during the night. But for the movie, Nintendo has broken its own rule and has brought out this gigantic ghost from the closet to walk in broad daylight to find the laws of physics of the Mushroom Kingdom. Regarding this though, let's just not comment further. Okay, so there's something that happens during the car race that makes no sense at all. And if you've played any of the Mario Kart games, you probably noticed this. There's a moment in which the Koopa boss gets angry and turns into a blue shell, the one we all know and hate. Now the rules for using this item in Mario Kart state that when you throw the blue shell, it pursues Sues and hits the first racer. But of course, in the movie, it doesn't quite work like that because it was fixated on Super Mario and ignores its own laws and does whatever it wants. If it worked as usual, the shell should have gone after Peach and Toad, who were first in the race. By the way, while we're talking about Mario Kart, Peach must have had a different vehicle than in Mario Kart 2 because floating on water with anti gravity instead of submerging is not something you can even do in the video games. Until the Super Mario movie, there have always been doubts about the real origin of Princess Peach. There were rumors that the princess could be an imposter, as the Super Crown could transform a normal toad like Toadette into a princess. But it became clear that Peach belongs to the real world, and that her mother threw her down the toilet to end up surrounded by humanoid mushrooms in an unknown kingdom. Mario and Peach don't know each other, although according to the video games, when they were babies, they met in the Mushroom Kingdom riding on Yoshi. In Yoshi's Island 2, you can see the infant version of both characters living the same adventure, something that seems to not happen in the same timeline as the Super Mario movie. There are two key characters who are not in the Super Mario movie and who are very important to the video game series. Toadette usually acts as the lady who assists Princess Peach in the Mushroom Kingdom, but in this strange movie universe, she only appears on a poster in Toad Town. Somehow, she doesn't seem to have any relationship with the princess, so unless they meet later and become super besties, we have a new script error here. On the other hand, Peach's assistant is Toadworth, whose role is to be the princess's advisor. This character has completely disappeared in the movie, despite existing in the Super Mario game since Super Mario Sunshine. Now, if we look at the conceptual arts for the movie, we can see that Nintendo and Illumination considered including the character, but in the end, they decided to replace him with a random toad with glasses and a very deep voice. 
The reception area of Princess Peach's castle has a huge mosaic that has appeared in many Super Mario games. So far, this sun-shaped ornament served as a moat, as can be seen in Paper Mario, the Origami King. But in the movie, Nintendo has taken the freedom of making it something completely different. The Mushroom Kingdom has its own holographic system to reconstruct topographical maps. The function of this place is completely different, and it's clear that it's been modified expressly for that scene in the movie, despite what is shown in the Mario video games. Alright, now let's have some fun with this. What do you want the mosaic of Princess Peach's castle to be like in its next life? The Super Mario star has always been a mysterious object. On one hand, we have common stars that make characters invincible. On the other hand, there are superstars that serve to unleash much greater power and that hide in different places. For example, in Super Mario 64, there were superstars hidden in various kingdoms. In the movie universe, however, for some strange reason, it seems that there's only one and the penguins have it. We don't know what the penguins have done to deserve the honor of guarding the most most powerful item in the universe, but clearly this kind of clashes with what we know from the Super Mario games. At least, when they use it, Mario and Luigi do become invincible, although the time that passes from when they use it until its effects disappear is much longer than in the video games. In fact, it seems that they can use it for as long as they want. Free infinite power for everyone except for Bowser. Since ancient times, when Princess Peach is wearing her dress, she doesn't wear anything else underneath. Okay, that sounded weird. Let me explain. In video games like Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, the princess has bare legs, something that also happens in 3D World, so it seems that she has never really needed to wear leggings or stockings. Well, this all changed in the movie. Now, Peach has been lightly censored with her pink leggings. Of course, we understand that this type of censorship is to not show too much of the princess's legs in the cinema, but it is undoubtedly a change that was never needed in the games. Most of the items shown in the Super Mario movie are very similar to how we know them in the games. The fire and ice flowers are very faithful to the original versions, also the superstar or the tanuki leaf. But there is a little problem with the most famous one, the mushrooms. The original design of Super Mario's mushrooms has eyes, and it has been this way since the character's earliest games. In the movie, however, they all appear flat, without eyes, and looking very different from how we knew them. It is likely that this decision in the new design of the mushrooms has to do with the toes, who are also mushrooms and also have eyes. And I guess it would be strange for Super Mario to eat his eye-bearing peers in a movie for all audiences. Although they provide special abilities, Super Mario's power-ups also have their limitations. For example, the effects of the superstar only last for a few seconds, or the tanuki suit makes Mario fly, but not all the time he wants. Except in the movie, because here it works in a very different way. Mario has unlimited flight by spinning his tail. In fact, he stays in the air for a really long time to rescue Luigi and fool the big bullet bill. At no time in the history of Super Mario has the normal tanuki suit allowed the plumber to fly for more than three or four seconds, and in the movie, he spends up to ten minutes in the air. In any case, for him to be able to fly forever, he would have had to grab a P-Wing, not a Tanuki Leaf. In Super Mario Odyssey for Nintendo Switch, Mario can travel to the New Donk Kingdom, one of the worlds in the game inspired by New York City and governed by Mayor Pauline. So far so good, right? But it turns out that in the movie, Pauline is also a mayor, but in New York. Here, we can see her on the television news commenting on the Brooklyn catastrophe, and here, observing the scene in one of the official movie posters. Needless to say, it's very difficult for a mayor to have the possibility to govern two completely different cities, no matter how good they are at their job. So in this case, the mistake was attributing the same role to a character, but completely changing the place where she does it. And speaking of the cat suit, it seems that when Nintendo developed Super Mario 3D World, they wanted both Cat Mario and the rest of the players to have an adorable cat suit. For that reason, they removed the claws from the design of this power-up, resulting in fluffy cat paws that, in addition to climbing, serve to attack the enemies. But you gotta watch out for this, because when we attacked, we did so without scratching them. In the movie, Cat Mario does have claws. Very sharp claws, in fact. He even manages to scratch Donkey Kong's face, showing blood on the ape's face for the first time. 
When Peach, Mario, and Toad arrive at a hill full of fire flowers, the princess touches one of them and automatically gets the white and red suit that allows her to throw fireballs. Again, so far so good, but there is a difference between the transformation in the movie and in the video games. If you recall, the first time we ever saw Fire Peach was in Super Mario 3D World, and if we compare her with the design in the movie, you'll see that Peach's hairstyle changes. In the game, she has a ponytail. In this scene, she wears her hair down. Okay, so of course a few differences between the Super Mario movie and the video games are gonna exist, but they really shouldn't be as big as this one. The only time something official about Mario and Luigi's parents have been seen in a video game was at the end of Yoshi's Island. After Yoshi defeated Baby Bowser and rescued Luigi, the store continued its journey with the protagonists and it turns out that when they arrive home, it was a huge mushroom, like the houses of the toads in the movie. Though at least it is confirmed that they were human because when the door is open, you can see the silhouette of their parent. Despite being a flop with the Super Mario lore, the movie is still quite entertaining, yeah? Leave more inconsistencies you may have noticed between the movie and the Super Mario games down in the comment section. And while you're down there, don't forget to subscribe to our channel so you won't miss anything about Super Mario and Nintendo. See you next time!